So I want, I want to thank everybody for, uh, on the committee for uh, their positive decision on this project, as well as to uh, the Office of Research for uh, having made these funds available. So the title of this is Antibody Dependent Enhancement of SARS cov 2 and this is a uh, project uh, involving uh, myself uh, and Tahir Khan as co investigator. You have to use the arrows, Don, on the screen. You can't just use the space bar. I'm using the arrows and they're not working. Weird. Um, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with this because this should work. So, uh, by way of background, anybody can enhance me. First of all, um, we know that COVID-19 case fatality rates uh, increase with age. Don, you know we can't see the screen, right? Oh, gosh. I don't know what's going on here. Let me... Actually, we cannot hear either. Yeah. It's relatively faint, but can you not hear at all? I can hear him, but it's just very quiet. Get in, my, uh, get in close to your microphone. Closer, pull, pull your computer closer to you. Hold on a second. Oh, Andre Luptak is actually suggesting, why don't you call in from your phone? Can you hear me okay now? That's better to me. That's good enough, but I don't see your screen at no. all. Sorry, uh, I mean, I see poppies. Am I sharing the screen now? Aren't those opium poppies? Yeah, so well, that's a different screen. I assume that's your screen, Don, but maybe if you have two monitors, we're looking at the wrong one. Okay, let me try. How's this? Okay, now we see you. Okay. I think we've got it now. Now we see the slideshow, great. Okay, thank goodness. All right, give me my five minutes again. Yeah, <laughs> you're at two minutes and 40 seconds. <laughs> so. We know that uh, COVID-19 case fatality rates are highly associated with age, such that very young uh, individuals do quite well with this infection, as has already been mentioned, whereas older ones have a problem at times. And some of this may be attributable to comorbidities that are associated with age. It certainly doesn't explain all the variability in, in infection outcomes. So what we propose is that pre-existing antibodies elicited by prior experience with some of the common cold coronaviruses predispose individuals to severe disease once they're exposed to SARS-CoV-2. And a major part of the rationale for this comes from the fact that there's a certain age threshold where older individuals, let's say after adolescence, virtually always have antibodies against these common coronaviruses, whereas younger individuals um, below that age cut off uh, um, may not. And, and furthermore, these levels will fade and they're boosted by repeated infections. So what we are really proposing is at play here is the phenomenon known as antibody-dependent enhancement, which occurs when antibodies listed by one virus cross-react with but don't neutralize a heterologous, a heterologous virus and in fact, enhance their uh, replication or their pathogenesis. And this phenomenon is very well described for dengue virus infections, as well as for a number of viruses uh, in animal models, in including the coronaviruses that I've listed here. And then another rationale for looking at this phenomenon is that SARS-CoV-2 is about 30 to 40 percent homologous with the common cold coronaviruses at the spike protein. Furthermore, um, these are data from Sahir Khan, who's my collaborator on this project. Individuals who've never been exposed to COVID-19 actually have antibodies that cross-react with uh, SARS-CoV-2. And you can see there's 
it's low level cross reactivity, but there is some. And, and here in the red, circled in red, is their activity against the common cold coronavirus. So much higher reactivity against them as you would expect. Our specific aim is to determine the impact of the anti common cold coronavirus antibodies on SARS CoV 2 infection and on cytokine responses of infected cells. So this is all going to be done in vitro. Uh, we will screen sera from individuals over a wide variety of uh, ages for their reactivity against these common cold coronaviruses, and then determine the ability of these sera to mediate antibody-dependent enhancement. And, and these will all be sera obtained prior to the COVID-19 epidemic. And then we'll also get our hands on some human monoclonal antibodies directed against the common coronaviruses, as well as SARS-CoV-2 once that becomes available. And that's through a collaboration with Jim, Jim Crow at Vanderbilt. Um, and then we'll also look at anti-SARS-CoV-2 sera, which are, of course, accumulating uh, with all the cases in, in Orange County. Um, experimentally, we're going to do serial dilutions of either these sera or monoclonal antibodies as well as control antibodies, and then mix them with pseudoviruses that express the SARS spike uh, proteins, SARS-CoV-2 spike protein. And then we'll determine uh, whether or not cells get infected and how much, and quantify that infection using a chemical luminescence readout. And then we'll also measure cytokines that are released by infection um, uh, with test and control antibodies. So what we, what we expect to see, if our hypothesis is correct, is that serum with antibodies against common cold coronaviruses will increase SARS-CoV-2 infectivity or will increase the release of cytokines compared to serum with little or no anti-common uh, cold coronavirus uh, antibody. And we hope to see some dose dependency of this response. And we also may see that low levels of anti-SARS-CoV-2 antibody also enhance infection. Um, and what we certainly expect to see is that higher levels of these anti-SARS-CoV-2 antibodies will neutralize the virus. Um, in terms of uh, implications for this research, we hope that it will inform vaccine development and passive immunotherapies. Certainly ADE, antibody-dependent enhancement, is, is not a good thing. It needs to be avoided if at all possible. Um, there are potential strategies for avoiding this. For example, if ADE is due to the activity against specific epitopes in the spike protein, those could potentially be eliminated from an immunogen in, in, in the development of a vaccine. Um, these results may also provide relevant information regarding subsequent protection after recovery from COVID-19, the so-called uh, immune passport, that's such a hot topic. If uh, ADE is part of that immune passport, it's not going to be a very good one. Uh, and then we also uh, hope that this will lead to further mechanistic and element study. I'll stop there, thank you. Okay, great. Uh, to keep us on schedule, I'm going to cut questions a little bit short, but we still have a minute if we could have some questions. John, as you know, these viruses are all extraordinarily diverse. Uh, how do you pick the right uh, sequences to test for? Um, I'm not sure exactly what you mean. I mean, we're going to be, our, our, the virus we're going to look at is SARS-CoV-2. Pseudoviruses made with SARS-CoV-2. We may eventually look at the virus itself. Um, in terms of the antibodies, they'll, virtually all have reactivity against some of these com common cold viruses. And we'll be able to see the relative act the activity against each one of those uh, using Sahir Khan's microarray uh, platform, which allows you really to dissect the activity of antibody responses against these individual uh, uh, viruses. And, and, and so we're not looking at any particular sequences of the virus. We're, I mean, if your question is the sequence of the spike protein on SARS-CoV-2, I mean, that has not shown, been shown to be particularly 
uh, polymorphic at this point, so we're not too concerned about that. Don? Certainly in terms of the cross-reactive antibodies, there is a concern there. Uh, you know, on the, on the peptide array, uh, you know, you have to pick something. Uh, and if you're, if you're seeing a false positive, for example, how will you know that you have the right sequence? I mean, that, that's, that's a question that everybody's facing because, because, you know, we don't really, we haven't really screened for these coronaviruses, you know, in common colds because they've been insignificant in terms of pathology. So we have sequences for reference strains, but we don't have a sequence that represents conserved antigens across the entire spectrum of the, of the family. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, basically, we're going to have some sort of correlation between the amount of activity seen with the microarray against these common coronaviruses and what happens when we throw in SARS-CoV with these antibodies. And yeah, it won't be it, it won't be very specific, I suppose, in the sense that you're referring to. Yeah, Dan, you had a question. Yeah. So, so Don. Yeah, um, but, uh, excuse me, Dan. While you're asking your question, could you uh, st do stop sharing your screen, Don and Ilhelm? Please get your slides loaded. Dan, go ahead. Yeah. So, so Don, it would seem to me that, and you know, uh, continuing with Michael's question. Uh, wouldn't we want to, as a corollary study, actually look at coronavirus antibody level at, from a maturational point of view and actually determine whether, in fact, children had fewer of the antibodies than adults did and whether they, in fact, increased with age? Wouldn't that sort of be a proof of concept for what you are arguing? We are. Dan, I, 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 you know what? I, I got a little distracted trying to unshare my, my screen. Sorry, can, you, can you briefly say that again? It was such a good question. I don't think I can repeat it. So, <laughs> no, I was, I was just wondering if, if, if a corollary study might be, and following up on Michael's question, if we could identify those antibodies from the other coronaviruses, wouldn't it be interesting to look at children or to look maturationally at the development of these antibodies across the lifespan so that we could actually test you know, the, uh, the clinical relevance of your hypothesis? Yeah, no, I mean, I, that's, that's really, really what we're doing, essentially, because we're looking at all different age groups and, 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 and understanding there's activity against these common coronaviruses, each one of them, uh, as well as their cross-reactivity with SARS-CoV-2. Yeah, 